when they first get married, they think they're going to change their spouse. They're going to make them into a better person. They're going to make them like me. They're going to change their habits, you know, like if, if they smoke before. I don't like smokers, so I don't... But I would tell a person, don't marry a smoker if you don't like a smoker, but that's beside them. So uh, the key is God will change you if you ask Him to. And, and to fall in love with God so much. How do you fall in love with God? How do you fall in love with any other human being? You spend time with them, right? Because you don't fall in love with someone you don't know. So you spend time with God alone. You spend time on the Word of God until you know it a little better and memorize certain verses because I really believe that we're in a time in history. We know what's happening in foreign countries. They, they come to, the militia come in, the police come in and take your Bible away from you. Too loud? No, your, your, your hand is getting too close to my oh. face. <laughs> so, so it's like we should really try to memorize maybe just this week one verse that we never read before. And keep like one of the ones I've started memorizing that's helped me through the days when I don't have money for tomorrow is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And that's trust the Lord. And I'm saying this for me because I don't have money for tomorrow. Trust the Lord with all my heart. I lean not on my own understanding. I acknowledge you in all my ways. And you will order my steps or direct my path right down where it's supposed to be, right down the middle, not to the left or the right. And there's all different versions of that. And I'm not a big believer in, like a lot of pastors, what they'll do or preachers, they will pick the version of the Bible that's their favorite version. What we really should do is as you get into it more, and if you're not reading the Bible, read any version right now, it's better than none. And then go into the original languages, like Becky's an expert on studying the Old Testament in the original languages. And I'm just getting into that. There is one Bible we just heard that goes into, what's it called? The KJ3? K, KJV3. What is it going to KJV3. KJV3. Um, so you try to get better at it. Uh, you try to spend more time. And then when you get up to about, they asked Martin Luther, who was probably more responsible for new Christianity than any other living human being. And he prayed three hours every morning. And people came up and asked him, how can you, how can you do that? And he said, when I, if I didn't do it, things wouldn't work the same way as when I did it. Like example, we had one fellow at the church we were going to, uh, he was the worship leader. By the way, we have a worship leader here once in a while, but he had to do a wedding today. So he plays a keyboard. So if any of you want to volunteer and be a worship leader or sing, uh, feel free to just ask me or whatever. And uh, that way I can come late and someone will open the door. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> the, reason, yeah, the reason I tell you that, 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 that my, one of my first weeks here, I was late, and um, I, I never knew why. I never knew why past is uh, when the worship team is singing. The worship leader will look to the, the other people in the group and they'll say, "Gee, the past is not here yet. We'll have to sing one more song." <laughs> so, so. Uh, but getting, I'm getting off the tangent there. I want to buckle down. My wife has yeah. it down where, where I'm only allowed to speak a certain number of minutes. I'm, I'm tired, and this is why I'm going to invite you back. I'm tired, and maybe you guys, you can tell me by uh, just agreeing. Are you tired of churches where the preacher speaks for an hour and a half? Right. Yeah. It's okay. sick. <laughs> He's oh. on an ego trip. <laughs> and, and one thing I did find, though, that most pastors do want people to be saved. And, and we really shouldn't even use that word with a non-Christian because they don't even know what that means. 
they think, well, save from what? Uh, so we have to stop our Christianese, they call it, and try to just love people. Just love them where they're at. Uh, so I'm going to give you that one example. So we met this worship leader at a Wawa near the church that afternoon, but he wasn't there at the service. And we said, hey, what happened? He said, well, I found out I have walking pneumonia. And walking pneumonia, you can have it, and you don't know you have it. But he found out about it because his lungs were starting to hurt. And uh, I said, the first thing you got to do is, he was smoking in front of the wall. I said, you got to stop smoking if you had a lung infection. So then we ran into him the next day in a different place. I'm saying this is the result of praying. And then we ran into him again the next day. And the next day. And then I read an article in a Reader's Digest at a doctor's office that the best thing to get rid of infection in the lungs is broccoli. So I texted him and I told him. He said, oh, I have some broccoli home, frozen broccoli. Now, frozen broccoli, they say, is better than fresh if it's not local. Like if right now you can get fresh broccoli in New Jersey. But in, in the wintertime, it's shipped from California, shipped from Cuba. I'm getting too close to so, And then the next day, we ran into in, in 10 days, we ran into him seven days, and he even stopped. He said, this is not accidental. And meeting Andrew, Louie, and David at Chick-fil-A, what, what day was that? Wednesday? Tuesday? I don't even know. Tuesday. A couple days ago. It was not accidental. And, and as you, like the reason we have the service on Saturday at 10 o'clock is it is the Sabbath. Plus it's, it's a break. Like even people who go to church on Sunday, I'd like them to come Saturday too. We, were, we came up, well, God gave us an idea to have a service at 3.30 Sunday afternoon. And that's for people who like to sleep late. Because I don't know how you feel about it, but I don't like to get up. You know? And I found out no one else likes to get up neither. It's like, God, why, why do I have to go to And then I found out the phrase, sacrifice of praise, sacrifice of worship. You have to sacrifice to be here. Ann has to sacrifice. I have to sacrifice. Becky, Andrew, uh, David, and Louie have to sacrifice because you probably wanted to sleep another 20 minutes, right? And you came, so I appreciate you coming. And I'm going to say a prayer for all of us now. We just come to you, God, Father, to thank you for blessing us all, for giving us eyesight. Oh, God, we have eyesight. We can see. And horrible. We thank you for hearing. We thank you for every little heartbeat. We thank you, God, Father, for the air we breathe. Every single breath we take, we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, that right now, we're together with other Christians, Lord, and we can pray. You tell us when two or three gather in your name, your presence. We thank you for your presence in this building, Lord. We thank you for your presence at Chick-fil-A. We thank you for your presence wherever we go. It doesn't have to be a church building, Lord. We are the church. We, that were chosen by you, Jesus Christ, we were chosen by you to be your friends. And what an honor that is to be a friend of God. We're a friend of God. The same God that created the entire universe. And let's forget even the, the, the now with the new telescopes in space, we've seen thousands and thousands of other stars that are suns and solar systems. Let's even forget that. Let's just go back to 1960, that they only knew about the sun and the Earth, and Jupiter, and Mars, and the planets, even that, just look at the miracle of that, 93 million miles away, and yet, the Earth revolves around it in perfect order. The Bible told us, before science, that the Earth was round, and Columbus didn't, when Columbus came 
told him, Revelation, he didn't even believe it. They 